Hello again, Rudy's Resurrection followers. Thanks for joining me again and following me along on this build. Today is June 9th, and I have kind of gotten up the confidence to tackle the bed. So this episode is going to be um, beginnings of getting the bed mounted. But before I do that, uh, I just want to uh, put in some bracing back in the back uh, portion of the frame. A couple times that I've driven the truck, it feels kind of very bouncy and it, and it seems like I can kind of feel, feel the frame flexing some. So I'm just going to take some, some one inch square tubing uh, and come back from my cross member uh, back to this upper portion of the, of the frame here. Uh, weld in a couple pieces and then tie them together and I'll kind of show you once I get all that in kind of what I did. Um, hopefully that's going to be big enough and strong enough. I don't, I don't think it's going to need a lot, but uh, this should add a little bit more um, integrity to the, the back portion of the frame here. Um, since the original car had multiple body mounts, as you come you know, from the front all the way to the back, it really strengthened the frame as well. Um, since these frames weren't designed to have um, you know, two-piece pickup truck bodies on them, you know, with the cab separated from the bed, um, you know, I've heard some some people talk about having just a little bit of, of frame flex in them. So hopefully that'll that'll strengthen that up. I'll cover that um, when we get to it. But I'm going to be taking some measurements and kind of deciding on just you know how wide I'm going to I'm going to make the bed. Um, because uh, if you saw in a previous episode, I, I widened the front fenders to uh, eliminate some tie rubbing, which I'll cover that again, kind of how that how that looks, uh, how that turned out uh, in, in a later episode. Uh, I think that went well, but I'm also going to widen the, the bed. Um, I think that's going to help balance it out, but also it's going to, you know, just prevent these rear tires from from sticking out of the uh, the fender wells, um, which is the bed. The width of the bed is, uh, or as it is now, they're going to stick out a couple inches on either side, and uh, I don't think that's going to look very good. So. I'm going to widen the bed, I'm going to take some measurements here, and we're going to jump in and get started, get this bed mounted. So here's how the frame bracing turned out. Kind of ended up being kind of like an A-frame kind of deal. Um, so I just kind of tied it in up here to the cross member, uh, just kind of right at the junction where that bracing kind of came into where I cut that relief out the bracing I put on the top, so I tied it in right there on both sides. And then came back to right, pretty much right uh, adjacent to where the rear sway bar bolts into this sort of saddle portion, if you will, of the of the rear back, the back part of the frame. So I think that's going to help kind of tie it together. It's, I think it's a good, good place to come into uh, the back part of the frame. Um, kind of just helps I think with the bracing. So we'll shoot some paint on this and then move on to uh, getting the bed cut down. Okay, so I've got the bed under the carport here. Got it up on jack stands and I've decided I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna add 10 inches uh, to the bed. What that's gonna allow is for the front portion of the bed where the, the two little step plates are to basically just clear the frame, the width of the frame because the Crown Vic frame at that point is about 58 and a half inches or something like that. Um, so I think that's just gonna allow it to clear. Um, I'm gonna have to cut reliefs in the side panels here for the wheels uh, or for the tires because it's gonna push the bed sides out just over the tires. But then when I get the, the fenders on, the fenders um, stand out from the side of the bed about 12, almost exactly 12 inches. So that's gonna give me probably about three inches um, of clearance on either side. So ultimately I'm, I'm planning on putting some wider uh, rims on the on the back of the truck, probably you know 10 inch rims or something like that. Give it a staggered look and I think that'll that'll work uh, very well because that'll that way when I put a little wider rim on the back it's gonna fill the the fender wells nicely. So this is pretty much the center um, and this is kinda just a, a sort of a, a channel piece here if you will. Um, so I'm just going to basically scribe it here right on the center, cut this, uh, and then I'll probably tack a piece of angle iron under the front of it. Once I uh, push it out 10 inches, tack a piece of angle iron here, and then I'm just going to get some 14 gauge 
uh, and just weld some plates in here just to strengthen that on the back. On the front, uh, the lower portion, the front of the bed is, is just sheet metal. The, I don't know if you can see, the, but the, the lower part of it up there is, uh, is really rotted out, so I've got to replace that lower part anyway. The upper part is, is kind of a, a basically a, a rectangular uh, piece of tubing, more or less. It, it's kind of sheet metal thickness too, a little bit thicker, um, more on the magnitude of the thickness here. So I'm just going to do the same thing on the front, cut it, push it apart, you know, tack a piece in there, um, and then just basically weld a combination of just pieces of, of sheet metal in the front. And, um, and then once I'm able to kind of get the reliefs cut, get the, get the bed set on the frame, then I can kind of see, you know, how much I'm going to have to cut off the back of the Crown Vic frame to try to use kind of these uh, original plates here for the, for the bed mount. I'm obviously going to have to modify that somehow, but uh, see how far, or, you know, where I've got to cut the Crown Vic frame off, how much i got to shorten that, and then kind of start working out where I'm going to mount the bed. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this cut. Well, now there's something you don't see every day. That's what you call a half bed. So I've got it cut in half, obviously. And you ask, where is the other half? Well, it's right over here. I actually got it mocked up on the truck with some jack stands. Basically, just kind of getting my measurements for the tire cut out here, um, as well as just sort of seeing you know, how it's going to fit down along side the, the frame here, um, the step and that kind of thing. I've got it set up here where there's about an inch between the front of the bed and the cab. I think that's about where... I'm going to um, set it, um, but the back part is a little bit, needs to be a little higher. Basically it's kind of coming down, sloping down a little bit, but I can't really do anything about it now because it's hitting the bottom of the frame here. Um, but just kind of getting an idea of where, you know, where it's going to get cut. Um, I'm probably going to cut it here uh, somewhere along where, the, where this frame starts to rise because I don't want it to come up in the floor of the bed in the very back. So I'll probably end up taking it through here somewhere, who knows, but I'll, I'll obviously cover that when I get to it. Um, and then I've got a leftover piece of C-channel that I use for the cross member. I'll probably use that to come across here somehow uh, for the very back part and then work out the mounts. There's the, kind of the original mounts, um, so I may have to you know, bring something off uh, of my back part here to, to mount that. Um, but that's what it's shaping up to look like. Pretty exciting. Okay, so I'm going to start with the back part of the bed first. So I've just got a, uh, the back part kind of clamped into a piece of angle iron on the inside here that runs all the way across. And I'm just going to tack that on the back side here and then check my measurements, make sure I'm still happy with everything. And then I'll move up to the front and get that tacked together. Okay, so I'm trimming off the front part of this, uh, of the bed here, and it was just really rotten down here at the bottom where a lot of water would lay down in the wood. Um, there was a little, basically a little angle in the front part of the, the bed here. So it was all rotten, so I'm just cutting all that out. I'm going to end up just putting a piece of angle iron, just one inch angle, or one and a half inch angle maybe all the way across, so that's going to really strengthen the front part of the cab here. And depending on what type of floor, sorry, the, of the bed, front part of the bed here, I am working on the bed now, um, the front part of the bed, depending on what floor I put in the bed, I'm not really sure. I probably won't be putting a wood, wood floor back in there, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, so I'm just going to probably put it at the same level it was. So I've got that kind of cut out. Um, 
if you can see here at the top where I had, um, it's got this little channel. I took that a little piece of um, half inch by one and a half inch um, tubing and I, I cut a piece that's probably about, I don't know, 24, uh, 30 inches or 25 inches, 30 inches, something like that. And I just slipped it in there in that channel on the inside, drilled some holes in the bed, and I just kind of spot welded it in place, and then just tacked it and welded it around here. So once I get my angle in down at the bottom, I'll just put a filler piece in here, just close all that up. Uh, the other thing I've done is um, when I had the, when I cut it in half uh, and had mocked up half of it on the, on the frame, I went ahead and measured kind of where my wheel the axle fell and where my wheel opening needed to be. I expanded that about three inches from the diameter of the tire uh, just so the wheel has got a little bit of travel here. And I went ahead and just cut this out. I left it kind of attached to the bottom so I'll cut it out here before I get ready to put the uh, set the bed down the frame kind of see how it all fits. But um, it's coming together. Gonna keep at it. Okay good morning. So today is Sunday, June 10th, and I got a ton of work done on the truck yesterday. As you can see, we've got the bed resting on the, on the back of the, of the truck now, uh, which is so cool to kind of see this thing coming together. Um, so I got the bed cut in half, added 10 inches to it yesterday. I got uh, some bracing in it. I haven't welded those areas up yet until I kind of make sure that the that the widening is the is the dimensions that I want it to be, that it's all going to work well, uh, and I think it is. I think it's going to work great. Uh, the most critical parts uh, of widening a flare side bed, I think, and getting it to fit over a Crown Vic frame, is the uh, is the front part, basically where the where these steps are. If you're going to use these on your truck, let me set my coffee down. It's kind of early here. And I'm really tired from all the work yesterday. Um, is kind of getting these to kind of come down uh, just at the side of the of the uh, of the frame rail of the Crown Vic because basically this part's going to come down just a little bit um, to the outside of the of the uh, frame. So by adding the 10 inches, I think it's just basically barely going to clear here, and then I'll just cut this off and, and make some type of bracket coming off the bottom of the Crown Vic frame to support this step and then it bolts into the fender uh, on the back side. But I'll cover this you know when I get to that point but um, I, think, I think this is going to work well. Um, what I've got to figure out today or the plan today is you know how I'm going to uh, create my frame geometry in the back of the back part of the frame. What I'm debating on doing is <clears throat> is actually doing a pie cut here at the very back, or actually the second to the to the last body mount for the Crown Vic body, just doing a pie cut and then just lowering this back part of the frame, and then just welding this up on both sides and then kind of plating it to strengthen it on the on the outside and inside. That way I can uh, keep all this together, cut both sides, lower it together, weld it up, and then I can cut my frame off the length I need it. Because I'd really like to use these um, bed mounts, the original bed mounts on the inside if I can on the back part of the frame. And then, and then you know, get the original bumper and everything to, to weld up directly to, you know, to the whatever piece I put across, the seat channel or whatever I put across the back of the frame. So that's what we're going to be working on today. Trying to get this sorted out so I can get the frame cut off and and start thinking about getting this bed mounted. So, here we go. Okay, so hopefully you can see these marks. What I've done is I kind of just I found the center of this uh, body mount on both sides here. Uh, just kind of marked the center of that. <clears throat> and then I, I just took a, a square and basically just kind of put it right here on the center and where it's touching at the top of the frame back here and uh, scribed a line and then 
where it is now. I've then dropped it down to kind of where I want it to be, which is kind of where at the bottom of where the Crown Vic frame is now. So that'll bring this, should bring this down about five inches, uh, and then scribe the second line where that is, kind of keeping, keeping this point right here at the top of the frame, right on the center mark of the body mount as the, as the pivot point, if you will. So that's the, the pie cut that I've come up with. Um, I did that on, on both sides of each frame horn. Kind of double check to make sure that the, the width at the very bottom is the same on both sides and on both frame rails. I'm just going to cut this out, drop the whole part down, weld it up, uh, and then I'll come back and put a, a stiffening plate on, the, on both sides, inside and outside. And then I'll cut my, cut my frame off the back here where I want it to be and go ahead and put my C channel across. Alright, let's get to work. So I got the cuts made. And you can kind of see both sides there, the near side and the far side. And so this back portion of the frame rail here now is a little more level, almost, almost completely level. So it just kind of comes straight out from the axle bend. So um, I measured back here at the, the very back cross piece uh, from one side to the other and it's the same distance from the floor. So it dropped about, I want to say about five inches from taking those wedges out. All right. So I've taken my fuel tank out <clears throat> since I'm going to be welding back here, obviously, uh, for safety purposes. And um, I made these cuts with the Sawzall because the fuel tank was still in at that time. Uh, so, no sparks. So I'm going to push it out in the driveway now where I've got good light and uh, get these pie cuts welded up and then cut the uh, back part off based on where I want it to, uh, to terminate. Okay, I've got these cuts cleaned up and I've uh, basically ground out just a little bit of a, um, a channel here. Uh, just the edges there so my weld can lay in there. Uh, and get a good good quality weld on there. I've done that on all four sides. So I'm going to tack it, uh, make sure my measurements at the back are even, and then get it welded up. So this is how the pie cut in the frame turned out. So after I cut the pie portion out, uh, I, I bent the frame down and then welded that line. And then I just cut a, a four pieces of 14 gauge steel four inches by four inches and then just welded those uh, over top of the seam here both on the inside and on the outside um, and so I think that's going to be plenty strong obviously you have to think about the potential for getting rear-ended uh, as, as you're kind of putting the the back end of these frames together so uh, obviously, I'm going to put some bracing and everything as well when I finally get the bumper and the back uh, portion of the uh, frame geometry uh, all figured out. Put some extra bracing in there and, the, and those kind of things. But uh, I think as far as this goes, I think that's going to work well. I may, I may um, well end up welding a piece of square tubing. I don't know, like two by two or two by one square tubing all the way across. Uh, right on, right over this original body mount just to kind of seal that up and also give me a, a place to, to mount the bed another point to mount the bed potentially across across there but I'll, I'll figure that out a little bit later so on to cutting the frame all right so here we are this is kind of how it's uh, it's worked out uh, depending on kind of where this back part of the bed was hitting the frame uh, I cut off about nine inches of uh, the back part of the frame. So at this point, the end of the frame where the cut is is hitting just perfectly on the inside of this here, uh, which is just almost um, where the original uh, bed mount was. And so the, the edges, outside edges of the bed mount are sitting on the top of the frame now. And I've just got some C-clamps on here, kind of clamping and holding it in place. Um, 
but I think I can basically uh, put a piece of angle across the very back that uh, these original bed mounts are going to bolt right directly to. I think that's going to work out perfect on the back. I may need to trim a little bit more off the back depending on how close it is to the cab. Right now it's about an inch uh, gap between the cab and the bed, so that's about where I like it to be. Um, so it's still setting a little bit higher um, than, than the, the body line dictates, so I've got to trim a little bit of this body mount off and let it drop down even more. And that way the frame is going to be more pretty much right in the center here uh, of this back part of the, of the bed. So uh, I think that's going to work, work great. Um, getting really excited about seeing the bed go onto the truck. Um, I, I wasn't so sure about widening it. Uh, I was debating on it for a long time, but I think it was really the right thing to do. Uh, I haven't got the fenders on there yet, but that's going to be kind of the next step. But I'm going to get all this kind of closed up, the front and the back part, um, and then and then get this get this bed mounted um, once and for all. Um, it's gone super well. I've had a great time doing it. Um, I wish the cab mounting would have been as easy as the bed mounting. I would have had this truck on the road and been driving it for months now. But uh, um, there's not too much to these old beds. So it's just going to be a bunch of welding and kind of getting, getting everything closed up. And I can work out the floor, you know, much, much later on after I, after I kind of get everything together and uh, that kind of thing. The other, one thing that's going to be a bit, be a bit of a challenge is going to be uh, fabbing my tailgate. I'm going to obviously have to add some metal into the gate to widen the gate. I like to use the original gate if I can. It's got a lot of rust in it as well, but I think I can patch it up and, and put some panels in it and get it, you know, get it to fit, fit the opening. That would be pretty cool if I can get that done. So I think I'm going to knock off here. It's uh, Sunday. June 10th, it's starting to get hot. I've got a lot, of, a lot of other things to do around here. I've got to get the grass cut and that kind of thing. So I'm going to get that done and then uh, take my girls over to the pool, neighborhood pool later today, and take a nice cool dip. I think I'm going to be jumping in today to cool off as well. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, follow me along on the build as always. If you've got any comments or, or suggestions, or uh, put that down in the comment. Uh, section. If you've got any questions, if you'd like to see anything in a little bit more detail or, or measurements, those kind of things, uh, just ask and I'll, uh, I'll do my best to kind of, kind of get that to you. But uh, so far it's coming along very nicely. Um, so I hope everyone has a good day and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.